Well, I'm Nate Hendricks, uh, producer, uh, audio engineer, musician, composer, all of that good stuff, just all raw creative. And uh, yeah, as far as my craft, uh, that's what I do is produce, compose, <laughs> all of that stuff. And write songs, work with artists, and you know, get the best songs done, things like that. Yeah, if I could take a train ride, to like Utah, which I actually did, and see trees and bears, or I could hear a cool song in a bar somewhere, or I could be at church, or I could hear a vocal somewhere. So pretty much that. Also movies, I like 80s movies, I like 70s stuff, like all the pimp stuff, all of that. Uh, music documentaries, yeah, so pretty much anything. And uh, sometimes uh, clothes will inspire something. Musical inspiration, like, I know you said the 80s and you said the 70s, you like those sounds and you like the aesthetics from um, those eras. But mm -hmm. are there any specific artists that you really take like a lot of inspiration from? Yeah, I like Prince a lot. Yeah, Prince, uh, Quincy Jones is one of my favorite producers. Now Rogers. I really wish I was in that time. Like, I wish I was right now, back then. Uh, Future Video, I like Kanye West a lot. So it can come from anywhere. Yeah, it can come from anywhere. That's good. So when did you realize that um, like music and like art was the avenue that you wanted to take on? It was pretty early. I was already like doing music since I was born. Like my whole family is musical. But uh, I think it happened like, uh, you know, nobody knows you can actually make a career out of it. But I got my first money from playing the drums when I was like eight. Like I played the drums, the drummer didn't show up and I was like, yes. So <laughs> I got to play the drums and then after that, like uh, the guy at the end of church handed me $25 for playing the drums. And I was like, whoa, like you can get paid for this. So that's pretty much when it happened. And then, uh, yeah, you know, so around that age, like eight years old. Like music can be pretty, uh, it could be pretty crazy sometimes, you know, uh, crazy situations, you know, uh, you know, you're dealing with literally some of the craziest people in the world in music. And, uh, you know, a lot of people just trying to take advantage of people. And, you know, you really have to make sure you do your research and know your stuff. So that's definitely an obstacle. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, things like that. So I would just say just how tough, uh, how tough music can be sometimes. Uh, I can't think of a specific situation right now. I'll probably think of it when I'm driving home. Like, you know, you think of all the best stuff when you like leave. A big thing of music is um, like black artistry. Like you know that a lot of music comes from black trailblazers. Um, it also comes from uh, black people not necessarily getting the recognition and the credit that they deserve for their contributions in music. Mm -hmm. So I wanted you, I wanted to hear like your thoughts on what do you think, um, what are some tips are, what do you think it takes to be a successful black artist or a successful black uh, producer or sound engineer in this uh, industry? I think it's the best time now. You got social media and stuff. So now you can literally go to Amazon and get all your equipment and then upload your stuff onto YouTube, SoundCloud. So I think back in the day, like you needed to go through record labels because you only had like three, three or four different you know, you just had Sony, Warner, or Universal. You had, uh, you just had just the three. I can't remember, I think it was maybe four. I can't remember the fourth one. But uh, you had to go through those folks to be able to even get your stuff out because it was like, studios were crazy expensive back then. And, you know, and then distribution, like now, now it's digital. So you don't have to like press up a million CDs and send them out and, you know things like that so i think it's a lot easier now <clears throat> for you know as long as you're being consistent and and uh uber number two <laughs> as long as you're being consistent and you know putting good stuff out there and you know building your stuff up i think it's a lot easier now for you know for uh i would say any artist to do their thing <laughs> Make sure it's good though. What is a, a good gem that you would give to somebody? Just like, um, it doesn't have to be in regards to music, but just like somebody that wants to follow their craft mm -hmm. and really step into like who they are and what they want to do in this lifetime. 
I just say just get started with whatever you got right now. Like uh, if you don't have the money to get your equipment or to get your tools and stuff, you got something right now that you can use to get started with. Like uh, for instance, if you want to start a uh, podcast or whatever, you don't have the equipment right now, but you got a phone with a recorder on there. So, you know, put your phone on the table and you and your friends talking to the phone and upload that and then you slowly, you know, deal it that way. Like. All the giant YouTube channels or anything go back to their early videos and they all started off dusty like everybody else. <laughs> Slowly built it up. Uh, I'll say uh, just keep on going. Don't give up when stuff happens. You know, uh, don't listen to too many people. Take advice with a grain of salt. Like, uh, don't take it so literal. You know, take like little pieces from it and the other stuff you don't necessarily have to use if you don't want to. And uh, yeah. And uh, the universe works in mysterious ways. I'm definitely missing some names, but those are the ones that uh, really inspire me a lot. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs>